the beginning of the winter solstice, Walpurgis is, as usual, closing down. Mm -hmm. Due to mass hibernation, which will last from now till sight of first crocus, all wizards are advised to set their alarm clocks to ring when wildest winter gives way to sunny spring. <laughs> I can't think what's keeping Majika. Oh, no. He's not started hibernating already, has he? Yes, isn't it lovely? It's Christmas, children. <laughs> yes, I'm really looking forward to it, too. You can't go to sleep yet, Mr. Majika. Yes. You simply can't miss out on today. Yes. It's the best day of the whole school year. Yes. The day we break up for Christmas. Yes. Please, sir. You know how much Mr. Potter needs you, sir. Oh. Well, you ought to have been here by now. To wake a whiz from deepest slumber, turn to section six, page number. Four and bingo, how it tickles when he awakes to Christmas prickles. Can Majika have got to? We've done it, Melanie. Ah! There you are at last, Majika. Oh, uh, Mr. Potter. Any sign of the vicar yet, Majika? Uh, no, Mr. Potter. Ah, oh, well, I suppose you'd better bring the tree in, then. Uh, tree, Mr. Potter? Uh, any particular tree, Mr. Potter? Oh. Mr. Majika, what are you waiting for us? Well, hurry up. I thought it's Christmas time. Bucket, Mr. Majika. Tree, Mrs. Bracegirdle. <laughs> for it to stand in. is, as usual, closing down. Mm -hmm. Due to mass hibernation, which will last from now till sight of first crocus, all wizards are advised to set their alarm clocks to ring when wildest winter gives way to sunny spring. I can't think what's keeping Majika. started hibernating already, has he? Yes, isn't it lovely? It's Christmas, children. <laughs> yes, I'm really looking forward to it, too. You can't go to sleep yet, Mr. Majika. Yes. You simply can't miss out on today. Yes. It's the best day of the whole school year. Yes. The day we break up for Christmas. Yes. Please, sir. You know how much Mr. Potter needs you, sir. Oh. Well, you ought to have been here by now. To wake a whiz from deepest slumber, turn to section six, page number. Four and bingo, how it tickles when he awakes to Christmas prickles. Can Majika have got to? What? You could be eating somebody I know, sir. <laughs> And what is that? That's mistletoe. Mistletoe? Whoever hangs up the mistletoe is waiting to be kissed. Really, Thomas? Mr. Majika? <laughs> Mrs. Bracegirl. Oh. Okay, sir. I'll come straight to the point. 
sir. Do you want the good news or the bad news, sir? Yeah, yeah the good news. It's Christmas. Uh, yeah, what's the bad news? We have a crisis, sir. Crisis? What crisis? Christmas is a time when we count our blessings, don't we, children? And our presents. Yes. I've asked for 365 presents this year, Mr. Potter. Have you really, yes? And what else do we do at Christmas, children? Have lots and lots of rows, eat lots and fall asleep. No. We sing carols round the village, don't we, children? No, no, we don't. Oh, yes, we do, Hamish. And what else do we do at Christmas, Mr. Potter? Um... Oh. You haven't forgotten about the nativity play, have you, Mr. Potter? How could I possibly forget Hamish Bigmore's sole contribution to our Christmas festivities? All right, you lot. What's going on, eh? In my humble opinion, sir, we have an outbreak of hoofamatosis, <laughs> sir. Hoofamatosis? <laughs> Lady Itis, more like. <laughs> right. I would like to remind all reindeer that Christmas Eve is our busiest night of the year. By the latest record, we have 38 billion toys to deliver. And only one oh, night across oh, the entire oh. planet Earth on which to do so. Perhaps we could call out a vet, sir. But veterinary pox is asleep for the winter, Rudolph. Oh, so he is, sir, yes. So, I'd like an immediate oh. uprising of dears. Oh. Now, dears. Oh. Look, do you think I like getting up? Don't you think I'd rather be lying in my pit, too? Do you think I actually like getting my little extremities frozen and my peak conditioned body squeezed into all sorts of unfortunate places and my well known face sooty? And as for all those rooftops. Oh, rooftops? Oh, Rudolph! Oh, no, it's not your fear of heights coming back, is it, sir? Look, why don't you let me talk to them, sir, while you just go back and wrap up a few more presents, sir? Right. All uh, right, dears. As senior reindeer, I'd just like to remind all other reindeer that this particular outing was mentioned in the job description when you applied to be Santa's reindeers, dears. OK, put it this way, dears. Will all those in favor of trekking across the universe immediate more please raise your right hoof? <laughs> uh huh. No hoof. It's me, everyone. Hamish Figmore, creator, devisor, writer, producer, and director of this year's Nativity Play. Which will, I am sure, only be topped in enjoyment by Mrs. Fudd's. Christmas lunch. Trap the turkey, wash the turkey, stuff the turkey, baste the turkey, prepare the gravy, take the lumps out the gravy, make the pudding. I'm afraid nobody's going anywhere this year, sir. What? But I've got millions of miles of wrapping paper. I mean, megatons of sticky tape. I know, sir, I know. Well, what am I supposed to do, Rudolph? I mean, Call a minicab. Look on the bright side, sir. What bright side? You've still got me, sir. I'm Hitch of Castle. And an egg. Right. Now, stir it all up. Wish it was all over. Oh, God. Mm. Blooming Christmas. Nothing but work, work, work for some of us. And that is very 
special time of year. I'd like to welcome you all to St. Barty's School annual seasonal offer. <laughs> and this year, our seasonal offering is a nativity play, which is completely the work of the work of uh, Hamish Bigmouth. <laughs> Who also stars as the innkeeper. There. I don't remember the innkeeper playing that larger part, do you, Majika? Oh, it's all new to me, Mr. Potter. <laughs> yes. There. That's it. All done for another year. Yummy, yummy. Lunch already, sir. My doesn't time fly when you're having fun, sir. This is fun. Mr. Potter, slice artistic hiccup, Mrs. Fudd. I wonder, could you possibly do the nativity commentary for us this year? <laughs> Me, Mr. Potter? <laughs> Only the vicar hasn't turned up, as usual. Uh, but, uh, what about my Christmas cooking, Mr. Potter? Leave it to me, Mr. Potter. Fourteen million seven hundred and one thousand six hundred and ninety-nine. Oh. Uh, pardon moi for asking, but what is this, sir? Mush. Mush. Mush, eh? And a very Merry Christmas to you too, sir. To you, my son, 39. <laughs> Yes, 
Well, I think that just about wraps it up for this year. Don't you, Hamish? On to the last event in St. Marty's Christmas calendar, which is, of course... <coughs> Christmas lunch. Ah! My grand! Ah! But, uh, baked to perfection, as always, by Mrs. Fudd. You've done wonderfully, Mrs. Fudd. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pachika. Time to up hooves and away, sir. Oh, do we have to? Already? I'm afraid so, sir, especially bearing in mind last Christmas, Aye. sir, when you'll no doubt recall we were somewhat delayed by your dropping off 91 mm. rooftops, yeah. stopping to drink two and a half million glasses mm. of sherry, and as a consequence falling into several thousand chimney stacks, sir. So I thought we ought to allow ourselves a little more time this year. Yes, well, I just want it all over with. I know you do, sir. And, of course, a less sympathetic reindeer might suggest you just cheer up, buck up, and get your act together, sir. Perhaps we could start by simply getting hit. Jolly good. After that surprisingly delicious Christmas luncheon, I now call upon our Magister Minimus, Mr. Majika, to ignite our next seasonal offering. You mean I can really set fire to something at last, sir? Oh, what am I going to set fire to? Oh, Mrs. Fudd's figgy pudding. And after you set fire to it, then what do you do, sir? Well, you eat it, Mr. Majika. Eat something that you've set fire to, sir. Brandy, Mrs. Fudd? Matches, Mrs. Fudd? got everything, sir. We don't want to have to come back again like we did last year for nine and a half million forgotten presents and your hot water bottle, do we, sir? No, Rudolph. Got your muffler and mittens, sir? Yes, Rudolph. And your flask of hot slush, sir, for me, sir? Yes. And you haven't forgotten your flying potion, have you, sir? To ward off your totally irrational fear of flying, sir. I knew he'd forget something. Oh, I'm really enjoying Christmas now, sir. Yeah. Look, everyone. A silver sixpence. And I've got one, too. How about you, Hamish? Uh, glasses. <laughs> Uh, naturally, I understand, sir, but we don't want everyone to know that Santa suffers from a fear of a rooftops, not to mention a total terror of enclosed spaces like chimney stacks, sir. Uh, quite, quite. Uh, so you won't look down and get giddy again this year, will you, sir? Uh, no, Rudolph. Okie dokie. Oh, oh. Who's in the way, sir? Oh. I don't look down. According to my latest reckoning, over Scotland, sir. 
Oh, Scotland. Mr. Majika! Mr. Majika! Melanie. Thomas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Majika. Well, what's this? It's a present for you. From Melanie and me, Mr. Majika. Now, where are we? Oh, route to Brickland, sir. Going down. But you mustn't open the present now. Oh, oh, mustn't I? No, you must wait until Christmas. Till Santa's been. Oh, must I? Oh, but I feel terrible, children, because I didn't know about presents until today. And you see, I haven't got any. It's all right, honestly. No, it's not all right. Where I come from, if one Walpurgian gives a present to another Walpurgian, it has to be... ...reciprocated. Oh, Mr. Majika! Thank you, sir. But you mustn't open them till Santa's been tonight. That reminds me. You haven't forgotten Mummy's carol singing, have you? Carol singing? You know, it's when grown-ups traipse round pretending to be jolly instead of grumpy as usual. And they sing songs like Come All You Frightful and stuff. Come All Ye Frightful? <laughs> you won't forget to hang up your Christmas stocking by the fire, will you, sir? Oh, no, Thomas, no. Because <laughs> what do we find in our stockings on Christmas morning? Santa's foot. No. We find tangerines, sweets and nuts, don't we, Mr Majika? Do we? No, Mugwort. Apprentice wizard, um, Majika. Uh, apprentice wizard. Uh, Claus. Not Santa Claus. Uh, yes. But what on earth are you doing down here on Christmas Eve? You, what on earth do you think I'm doing down here on Christmas Eve? You haven't started your epic journey across the universe already, have you, sir? Well, of course I pleasantly well have. In daylight, sir? Well, I don't like driving at night. So, what on earth happened to you, sir? I lost my flying potion. Oh, no. Well, can you get me down from here, Majika? Leave it to me, Santa. <laughs> I should have opened the window first. Mr. Potter. Good, I knew you would. I simply can't think where Mr. Majika could have got to. He really should have been here by now. Well, Miss Haddock's already distributed the carol sheets, despite her gammy leg. Yes. And personally, I was relying on Mr. Majika to raise our ding-dongs in Merrily on High. I was rather hoping he'd eat all these mince pies one gets off. Mm. <laughs> well, something must be keeping him. So that's where you've been all these years, living at the North Pole? Yes. <coughs> 299 years, to be precise. Now, I took the job over from my mother. Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's a steady enough little number, you know. I mean, making toys for all the smalls all the year, and then out over Christmas delivering them. <laughs> yeah, of course, I was always good at toy-making at sedimentary school. 
You weren't. Well, it wasn't bad. You were terrible. Well, it was the only job available at the time. And the worshipful wizard said I should be uh, tucked away somewhere out of trouble. Yes, he said the same to me. So that's how I came to be at the North Pole, like. Did anybody by chance forget that there's a stone-cold reindeer up here, too? Rudolph? Is that Rudolph? It certainly is, sir. And I will not only have a red nose, I will have serious frostbite if not pulled out soon, sir. If you wouldn't mind being somewhat careful with the antlers, I'm very uh, attached to them. <laughs> the other reindeer, Rudolph? Tucked up in the reindeer restroom, sipping a hot turn of drink, all sadly indisposed, sir. Oh, no. Oh, yes, sir. And so for the first time ever, the burden of bringing Christmas cheer rests solely on me and him, sir. Don't panic, sir. Don't panic. Panicking? Who's panicking? Upstairs, sir. Quick. Uh, children, what on earth are you doing here? You've forgotten all about Mummy's carol singing party, haven't you, sir? I... You're late. Very late. I'm afraid I can't come out now, children. You can't? No, I can't. Why not? Because I've got visitors, that's why. Visitors, sir? Not someone from Walpurgis, sir. No. Then who have you got in your windmill, sir? Someone from the North Pole, Thomas. Not! <laughs> Look at the boots, children. Not to tell anyone that he's here, right? We won't, sir. Do you know how many children have actually seen Santa Claus? Not one. <gasps> oh. Hello, Smalls. Is it really you? Are you really Santa Claus? These are my best friends in the whole of Britland, your beardedness. Greetings. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Well, I'm certainly not Little Boy Blue. But why aren't you out delivering all our presents, sir? Santa had a little accident, Melanie. He didn't fail his sorcery exams too, did he, sir? No, his driving test! <laughs> oh, Mr. Majeka, what am I going to do? I mean, just look at me. I'm a nervous wreck. You're always a nervous wreck. <laughs> He's always a nervous wreck. <laughs> I've got ripped red robes, a, a red-nosed reindeer. Achoo. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. And a broken sleigh. Can't you still fly? Unfortunately not. On account of Santa dropped his flying potion. As you're possibly aware, Santa does suffer from an overwhelming, though totally irrational, fear of heights. But if I don't deliver all those toys to all those little smalls tonight, they'll stop believing in me. Oh, no, sir. He's right, Melanie. You can't let that happen, Mr. Majika. Santa's loved by all the boys and girls. You've got to do something, Majika. Leave it to me, Santa. Ding dong, merrily on high. Ding ding. In heaven the bells are ringing. Ding. Oh, it's just no good without our dongs, Mr. Potter. I'm a dab hand at bell ringing too, Bounty. But if you're donging the bells, Mr. Potter, who is going to be collecting for poor stockbrokers? One more time. <laughs> Sir? Uh, Sir? Uh, Sir Majika calling, Sir? Problems, Majika? Well, just the one problem, sir. Uh, well, spit it out. We're all trying to hibernate up here, you know. It's Santa Claus, sir. Oh. 
Not again. Has his crash landed in Britland and can't continue with his rounds. And don't look at me to help either. I have had Christmas up to here. In that case, there's only one thing for it, Majika. Cancel Christmas? No, no, no. You'll have to take over, Majika. Me, sir? Yes, everyone else up here is asleep, you know. Yes, sir. So it's all down to you, Majika. Oh, no, sir. Carry on, Majika. Oh. Don't worry. We'll help you. But where am I going to get a Santa outfit at this time? We could mend Santas. And leave him with nothing to wear. No, no, Melanie. Majika's bound to turn up soon, Mrs. Bracegirt. Well, I sincerely hope so, Mr. Potter. Well, I've got a Santa Claus costume already for him. Oh, have you really, Bunty? One more rehearsal. Lights. Ding dong merrily on high. In heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong merrily the sky is riven with angels singing. Gloria. I suppose it's better than nothing, but I, I still haven't got a reindeer. Come on. I've got it, Melanie. Well, I hope you're satisfied, sir, that this year the legendary partnership of Rudolph and Santa is being replaced by a failed wizard and a stag's head from the Barty Arms, sir. You will remember the Red Claws Code, won't you? The Red Claws Code, sir? Go as quietly as possible, never be seen by a grown-up, and always give a present to every small, no matter how horrible. Uh... 48, 49. You sure you've hung up enough pillowcases, Hamie? 50. 51. Cos Santa's gonna bring my little Hamie lots and lots of presents, isn't he, Hamie? For the last time, Mummy, there's no such person as Santa Claus. Really, Hamie? And I always thought there was. Noel, Noel, born 52, in 53. Come on. All right. Of course, you know he's never going to make it, sir. Never in the month of Christmases, sir. I come to you, and to you your words will do. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. Mr. Potter, would you like one of these? Oh. <laughs> and after that, excru... An exquisite rendering of Here We Come Wassailing by the Sewing Circle Harmony Sextet. I now call upon Mrs. Pamela Bigmore <laughs> to switch on Much Barty's famous Christmas lights, which this year extend from the Barty Arms car park to the Nimble Thimble Wool Shop. <laughs> Mrs. Pamela Bigmore, everyone. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Any sign of Mr. Majika yet? How many presents have you got to deliver, sir? Oh, about 37 million, Thomas. You'd better get a move on then, sir. Oh, there you are, children. Where have you two been, eh? Helping Santa Claus, Mummy. Don't be silly, Melanie. Mummy doesn't like silliness, does she? Now, what have you two really been up to? Looking after a man with a white beard and a reindeer, Mummy. Do you want legs, Melanie? And now, ladies and gentlemen, on your front seat, ding dong, merrily on top. 
hope he knows what he's doing in heaven where the bells are ringing. I wonder how he's getting on, Rudolph. Really getting the hang of things now. <laughs> I can see him now, Melanie. Probably take him from now till next Christmas to deliver everything, sir. Oh, no. Oh, yes, sir. Miss Melanie? Grace Girdle? <laughs> and Pickles the Labrador, Grace Girdle. after yet another seasonal carol. Is it not a comfort to know that Miss Haddock of the Savory Flan Committee is on hand with yet more nice mm, mince pies? Oh. Mm. That'll do very nicely for Rudolph. And now, Onwards to another much-loved Christmas song. It's the little boy that Santa Claus forgot. He's the little boy that Santa Claus forgot. Dear Santa, Dudley Cicero Potter here again, Santa. I have written to you for the past 50 years asking for a train set. I have not yet received a train set, Santa, but maybe this year I'll be lucky, eh? Yours, hopefully, Dudley Potter. Left a note for Santa, for some soldiers and a drum. It broke his little heart when he found Santa hadn't come. In the street he envies all those lucky boys, then wanders home to last year's broken toys. Mrs. Fudd. Mrs. Fudd. Yes, I'm so sorry for that laddie. He hasn't got a daddy. He's a little boy that Santa Claus forgot. Presents I want by Hamish Bigmore. You don't think he might be tiring at all, dear Rudolph? Always a possibility, sir.
taking Santa's place tonight, are we, sir? However, did you guess? Won't be a minute, sir. Pluckley to Z Victor One. Z Victor One to Pluckley. Come in, Pluckley. Over. There's a funny chappy out here tonight, Sarge. <laughs> Not dressed in a long red outfit with a white beard, is he? <laughs> How did you guess, Sarge? Book him, Pluckley. Yes, Sarge. <laughs> There's still no sign of him flying across the sky, then, Rudolph. I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, dear. Santa Claus. There's no such thing. Uh, 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 uh. Help! Help! I'm stuck! Uh, uh, uh. I, I bet you can't. Guess who I am, Hamish? A burglar! Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm Santa Claus, aren't I? No, you're not. I am! Hamish! Hamish! Come back! Hamish! Hello, much party please? Oh, Hamish Bigmore of the big oh, house here. Oh, Hamish. Could you come right away? There's a burglar stuck in the chimney, sir. I should have brought Santa's squeeze juice with me. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan. Guess who I've got stuck down my chimney? A burglar in a red suit with a white beard. Why, Amy, my baby, what on earth are you doing out here? Trapping a burglar, Mummy. <laughs> there he is, Thomas. Oh, no, he looks well and truly stuck, Melanie. Come on. <laughs> Santa Claus. I knew it. Something's gone wrong. The smalls are back already, sir. It's Mr. Majika. He's stuck in a chimney. But if Santa doesn't complete his flight across the planet, we're finished, Rudolph. You know you're right, sir. There's just one problem, Rudolph. Your fear of heights, sir. <laughs> just leave it to Rudolph, sir. A reindeer's got to do what a reindeer's got to do, all right, Thomas? Ah, now let me see. Potions, potion, potion for flea bites. Ah, potion for flying. Open wide, sir. Say, R. I. R for Rudolph, sir. Uh... <laughs> there are times when it's a heady responsibility being irreplaceable, isn't it, sir? <laughs>
Come on. Get here. Yeah. Come on. <coughs> well, big boy, where is he? He's not there anymore, sir. Oh, flown off on his sleigh, has he? Up hooves and away, sir! Listen, sonny, I've got better things to do in my time than chase after mythical men with white beards. My baby! But, uh... I saw him too, Sarge. Let's not start all that again, Pluckley.
Join Sarah Kennedy for an Animal Country Christmas special with a bumper collection of animals, large and small, some of them very seasonally coloured. There's a visit to a village blacksmith. I've had broken ribs and uh, shoulder and uh, toes and one thing or another, but not too bad. There's also a James Herriot style country vet. But the real star of the show is Gizmo, the Red Panda. Tune in at the new time of 5.15 for an Animal Country Christmas special tonight. But next this afternoon, Jim Bowen is back with a special Christmas edition of Bullseye. <laughs>